Hi, welcome to SBR Sports Picks. I'm Peter Loshak. Today is Monday, May 16th. We are talking right now with SBR contributor Dana Lane. We're talking NHL playoffs, handicapping game two, Tampa Bay, Pittsburgh. Dana Lane, you know, in game one, we, uh, we sort of discussed that we thought Pittsburgh had the edge, but that the line was just too high. And here, I think we have that even to a more extreme degree, right? I mean, I know that this is a bounce back spot for Pittsburgh. They lost game one. They're probably going to come back here and win this one. But minus 200? I mean, Tampa Bay at plus 180 on the other side. They already beat them in game one. They're a playoff team that's good enough to get to this point in the playoffs. I know Ben Bishop is out, but, but you know, uh, Vasilevsky was, was fine replacing him. How can Tampa Bay be plus 180 here, Dana Lane? And is that a side with value? Yeah, I mean, you hit it right on the head, Pete. I think when, when they found out that, uh, that Vasilevsky would be starting in goal, that line seemed to just shoot right up. And uh, obviously, there is also the bounce back factor involved for a lot of better. So, I mean, look, for us, for our purposes, Pete, we, we don't want anything to do with this. But it is very interesting. And I would alert people to the possibility of being surprised tonight. Uh, Mike Sullivan came out and said, well, we're not going to name our top six defensemen until game time. Well, that's kind of an odd thing. I mean, we uh, normally you would not make such a big deal out of that. Well, why did we make a big deal out of it? Well, we saw that Steven Stamkos yesterday at practice centered that fourth line. He did not participate in, in power play drills, but did participate in penalty killing drills. We also know that Anton Strahlman also has been uh, working out with the team and seems by many reports to be even closer than Ben Bishop to, or to Steven Stamkos to getting back on the ice. So you may see a surprise out of Tampa Bay tonight uh, with those two guys. And I, I don't think the betters or the odds makers are anticipating that because if they were, uh, the, certainly the line wouldn't be what it is. But uh, there, there is some rumblings about the possibility of, of one of those two uh, getting back on the ice. And of course, you know, Ben Bishop's injury was not as bad as, as uh, anticipated. I don't anticipate seeing him tonight, uh, but thankfully for Tampa, it's not that bad. You know, for me, Pete, I just think Peng the Penguins need to stay focused on using their speed. They need to get the pucks in deeper than they did in game one. They, they, you know, a friend of mine said, well, geez, they had 35 shots. Fantastic effort. Great goaltending. Well, not really, because most of those shots came from the perimeter and most NHL goaltenders will stop 99.9% uh, .9 of those. So I think you will see an effort for Pittsburgh to use their speed, especially up the middle, to create a lot more havoc in front of Vasilevsky tonight. Uh, so what we're going to do in this game, we're still going to stick with that over over five minus a dollar seventeen at at Pinnacle. Open up at a dollar twenty five, so you're getting value there. We do we are going to side with the Penguins, but we're going to side with them in the first period at minus a dollar sixty three, which brings that two dollars down quite a bit. Uh, still very high, but better than two dollars. And then just. Just because we think, again, there's going to be a little bit of a feeling out process because I still think you're going to see two different teams on the ice tonight than you did in game one. We're still going to go with that under in the first period at minus $1.39. Interesting. I actually, that is the one bet that I did make on this game, the first period under. Uh, you know, it's a bet that I think is probably solid. If it loses, I'll be okay with it, that I made the bet. Uh, but you're willing to lay the big number with, the, with Pittsburgh in the first period, and, uh, and you expect a, a more dynamic offensive game from them, so that's why you see the, uh, the over is probably going to be a good bet. You think they're going to get a lot more uh, high-quality shots in this one than they did in game one? Well, Pete, when you have more speed, you're able to do more things, and that means you're able to pinch on the puck a lot more. Your your forecheck is a lot more aggressive, and like we said in our first video, I think it's just going to be there's going to be a game um, where where Pitts, the first game is going to be a game where the Penguins have to kind of get over the residue of the Washington Capitals series, and I expect a much better effort because hey, hey if Mike Sullivan doesn't have his team ready to go in Game Two, uh, they're down two games to none going back to Amelie Arena, and you could basically say that Tampa Bay is penciled in for the Stanley Cup Finals. Yeah, and Pittsburgh definitely improved with the coaching change when Sullivan took over, so he's definitely a coach that I wouldn't want to uh, bet against, you know, in a situation like this where uh, where they're coming off a loss. It's just the line is so high, but not too high for, uh, for Dana Lane to want to take a shot with Pittsburgh in the first period, minus 163 at Pinnacle. Dana Lane, interesting analysis as always. Thanks so much. Well, I appreciate your time, Pete. Have a great day.